Well, one mining company that's saying that the quake in Japan has not affected its operations is Fortescue Metals. It's also staying bullish on China's iron ore demands. I'm now joined live from Hong Kong by Andrew Forrest, Fortescue Metals CEO. Forbes ranks him as Australia's second richest person. Welcome to you, Andrew. So let's talk about the steel Thank market. Good morning, it was very strong indeed in 2010. In fact, Australia exporting 50 billion worth of iron ore last year alone. Do you see that continuing? That trend or do you see it flattening out a bit? Um, Australia's share of that iron ore market into China has increased. So I think from an Australian perspective, yes, it will continue to increase. I think from an overall perspective, um, China's imports may flatten out, um, but it'll be, it'll be temporary. Um, you can't expect growth in a straight line. And, uh, and I, do, I do believe, from, particularly from an Australian perspective, where we're tucked up under the nose of China, the future is very bright. You say it may flatten out a touch in China. By how much? Oh, look, I don't think it'll be barely measurable. It's, it, it, is, it is just a conservative development. But what I do notice is that the Australian market share has improved, has increased in China. And so it's certainly not flattening out from an Australian perspective. We're growing our companies as quickly as possible. Indeed, today we announced our 10 billionth tonne of iron ore discovery from our dominant position in the Pilbara, so it's a, it's a great day for Fortescue. Some analysts are saying that the iron ore market will be oversupplied by 2014-15, which is when you plan to have some of your expansion online. Are you concerned about that? You know, I just look at that. I, you know, I've, I've, I've found the only analyst really worth seriously listening to in the long term is China itself on China. China has this uncanny habit of doing what it says it's going to do. And, um, and China's now building capacity to go from about 790 um, million tonnes of steel to 1,290. That's a 500 million tonne jump in steel, steel production capacity. That would need around 900 million tonnes of new iron ore. That's like double what we currently have. So, no, I'm actually not concerned about that. I'm actually quite concerned about iron ore supply is a risk going, going forward and Fortescue is moving rapidly with its 100 million tonne expansion to mitigate that risk. So you think there's a risk that there won't be enough of it rather than it being oversupplied. But you are heavily dependent on China as a customer and you do want to diversify away from that. Uh, where are you looking? Where are the opportunities? Well, in 2003-2004 we we, we pegged our masks to, to the China ship. We're very comfortable about that. It's a, it's a strongly performing economy. It's a command economy with e enough market free enterprise to really release that Chinese entre entrepreneurial spirit, but in a manner where they can withstand shocks and control their growth in a, in a way that every Western economy politician leader would be jealous of. So we're not concerned about China, but we are very aware that there's a third wave coming that, that India will probably beat it in and the rest of the Asian economies are gearing up to dramatically increase steel consumption. That has to come from, from somewhere and Fortescue is talking to all those countries. How about Japan? You're going to look to get in on the reconstruction effort there? I know it's not a place that you have much exposure to now, but uh, what about uh, post-quake? Well, we have very long-term relationships with China. Um, we've, we've, we've contacted all our friends over there. We, we, we feel for them deeply, but we will be able to, to meet their iron ore demands. We've got um, some, some growing relationships there. Um, and uh, and as, as China needs us, we will cert as Japan needs us, we will certainly respond. Now, Andrew, the last few months have seen some pretty major events in the world. We've had the wave of unrest in the Arab world, popular uprisings, the quake in Japan, the subsequent nuclear crisis. We also have the European debt crisis dragging on. Are you not concerned that investor sentiment could take a sharp turn here for the worse? What I watch very carefully is the three billion people of the world who really matter here, the developing world. Um, it, it is it's their demand, it's their ability to look with a rapid escalation in, in communication efficiency between people where they, they look at the developed world and say, why haven't we got what they have? And there isn't a ready answer to that. They have the energy, they have the capacity and they have the hunger to succeed as any Western person would. So that three billion people is where Fortescue concentrates its efforts um, and we will struggle to keep up with the demand from, from that half of the world which is basically moving from developing to developed in the next 
one or two decades and it's a historic right. time to be alive, it's a historic time to be in business. But you are looking to global investors to help you fund your expansion. In fact, uh, you should be raising some money perhaps in the debt markets uh, within the next year or two. How much are you looking to raise and how are you going to do it? Look, thank you. We've raised recently around $3.5 billion um, in competitive long-term but repayable capital. So we're very comfortable with our position there. We are being offered other lines of finance, um, but we're also cash flowing very strongly. So the $8.4 billion um, for our new project will be half funded by cash, probably even two-thirds funded by cash, we think, and, and the balance by, by facilities. We've already got two billion in cash and, and, and growing. So we think we're in a very good shape there. It'll build out a company which will have um, an iron ore value equivalent to say BHP and Rio Tinto currently. Their iron ore value in their market cap's over a hundred billion each. Now we're only around 20 billion and we'll achieve where they currently are we think in two to three years. So we're excited about that future and certainly there's no um, shortage of bankers to, to uh, participate in it. Can I just press you on that, Mr. Forrest? Will you go to North America and issue some, some bonds there soon? Look, we're, we're giving Asian investors an opportunity. The U.S. capital markets know Fortescue extremely well. We're a very popular company. Every time we, we issue debt securities there, it's massively oversubscribed. So that for us is a friendly and easy option. But we, we're certainly encouraging Asian investors to get strongly involved, and they are responding. There's, a, there's, there's bank facilities being put together as we speak. We see no shortage of capital for the iron ore growth which Fortescue can bring to the market. Andrew Forrest, CEO of Fortescue Metals, we thank you very much for your time this morning. And very good morning to, to you and your viewers, Lindsay. Thank you.